Well, thank you for um, hosting me today, and and uh, I'll be uh, going through a little bit of an overview of the markets and the economy, and then moving right into uh, my outlook for gold. So, um, I think uh, well, obviously we're in some pretty unprecedented times, and uh, it's leading to some unprecedented responses from the government and from the central banks. Uh, and, you know, that has long-term implications for both the market and, and for uh, the metals. Um, but uh, in terms of the um, economy, I am in a, uh, a very small camp that says we are in, and I was calling for this for years, saying that when we end the cycle, it's going to end in a global bust. So I use the term bust to uh, describe something that's bigger than a recession, steeper and uh, worse than a recession, but not as elongated as a depression. So I think over the course of the next year, we'll be deep in that. I, I think we are in the bust now, what I call uh, the beginnings of a global deflationary bust that I think will, uh, following a couple quarters of rebound, uh, go into a second phase of the bust that I think will be steeper and deeper than the first phase. So. Um, you know, probably late this year, or early next, we'll um, you know we'll end this uh, bounce and start heading the other way again. And I think the second phase, you have much more insolvency issues. And um, you know, the problem we can talk talk about the next two quarters as recovery quarters, but it will be very uneven and not um, supportive of a lot of um, sectors of the economy. So. Um, it makes it tough, you know, it won't feel like a normal recovery, but in in the places that are benefiting, it will be uh, pretty steep coming out of the trough. So so I think third and fourth quarters are going to be surprisingly good, um, but um, uh, statistically at least, but you, as everybody knows, airlines, hotels, uh, restaurants, et cetera, are, are still going to be in really rough shape. Um, so... Uh, that's my economic outlook uh, for the next year. Uh, beyond that, I do think that the response from the central banks will be massive. We've already seen a, a you know, historically massive response, um, but uh, an even bigger one will come in the second phase because they'll have to do it. Uh, and this will be global, not just the Fed. Um, and that will, that will lead to a, a very strong um, industrial recovery from 2022 out to probably the la latter part of this decade. Um, it will be the first industrial-led recovery that we've seen since the 1970s. Uh, for a lot of people, I was around then, but for a lot of people, they've never seen uh, either an inflation cycle or an industrial-led cycle. It's all been consumer and disinflation since 1982. So, So we're we're looking at something that will be very different. Um, it will be spurred on by a lot of uh, monetary and fiscal spending and reshoring of capacity from China, et cetera. But um, it will be robust, and it will lead to, a, I think, a very sharp inflation cycle. It'll start gradually and then move from there. Um, and just to transition over to the markets, I think we're in the latter stages of a 38-year secular bull market that began in 1982, was driven by disinflation. You know, inflation came down from 20% uh, down to zero, and ultimately next year, I think we'll see uh, negative inflation, maybe fairly uh, deep negative inflation of three, four, five percent. Um, so. Um, and then and then the inflation will follow that with a lag of another year or more. Um, so um, that's, uh, you know, a secular bull market that, be, you know, that is coming to an end. I think it will end in a melt up. So I believe in the next few months you'll see uh, I've been calling for 42 to 4,500 on the S&P. I think you'll see that uh, this year and probably um, by by this fall uh, could happen. Um, by the end of this quarter, but but uh, we'll be well on our way at least uh, in this quarter. And um, it melt up means it's going to go parabolic. It's going to get even steeper than it's been out of the March trough. Um, and I think again, it's very much uh, propped up or propelled by 
um, the uh, the big money that's been uh, pumped into the system. Um, and but there is also a response to um, that money will lead to some fundamental improvements in in certain industries. So um, I think the the market will broaden out, and you will see um, you know things like um, energy start picking up speed here and taking over a little bit of the performance. Uh, industrials maybe a little bit from from the tech that's been so you know the the big driver of the rallies thus far. Um, gold and the miners um, I think uh, do do uh, very well in this move into the top, and then where I think the um, stock market will probably not see the highs we we make this year again for at least a decade maybe two. Um, gold and and the precious metals in general. I think make major, major new highs as we move through the next um, uh, through the decade. So, so gold, which uh, is currently a little over eighteen hundred, I think it can get to twenty three hundred uh, in this rally this year, um, and then I think it gets hit like most assets in the bust. But whereas I think the stock market can drop as much as eighty percent in the second phase of the bust in a in a very steep bear market. Um, I'm guessing that uh, gold probably uh, and the miners probably don't correct much more than 30, 35 percent, and gold itself less than that. So, uh, and then I I believe we'll see $10,000 gold probably higher than that even uh, by the end of this decade. Um, and by the way, silver pretty much same path. I think silver can get to 35 this year. Um, you know, a correction to that might take it back to the mid 20s in the bust, um, and then I think uh, we'll see silver north of $300 this decade. So, so there's a big runway still ahead for gold and silver. Um, it's interesting. You had, you know, gold and silver both peak out. Uh, gold in 2011, silver I can't remember exactly when it was uh, near there, um, and then uh, you went through a long consolidation, first a very steep sell-off, and then for the last um, several years, a kind of a long, um, drawn-out consolidation. And we came out of that. We bottomed uh, in 2015 at um, 1050, so you were at 1900 on gold back in 2011 at the peak, and bottomed out at 1050 in late 2015. Um, Spent another few years kind of up and down, and uh, then another bottom at 1160, a higher bottom in 11, at 1160 in August of 2018. Uh, and from there, we've gone in, in two years' time, we've gone up 650 points. So, so gold's really had you know a bull market here for the last couple of years, or yeah, for the last couple of years. Um, and I think that just uh, continues here as it starts breaking above some. Some important resistance at the uh, old highs, uh, you know, the 1900 area. Um, so there's, I think, a lot of excitement ahead for the metals, um, and it's been a long, long period of of uh, testing people's patience. You know, there were good periods in there where if you were a trader, you made some money, but for investors and for a lot of gold bugs who thought this would happen way before this. Uh, it's been a frustrating period where a lot of them uh, threw in the towel and haven't been back. I think you're beginning to see all that change now. Uh, gold's getting more sponsorship, and uh, as as is silver, and I think that's uh, that's what we're going to see here for the next several months. Um, so that's kind of my uh, outlook for gold in a nutshell. By the way, my inflation call for the inflation cycle is that we'll start from obviously negative. Uh, inflation in the next year, and uh, at the end of the decade, we'll have retraced the entire um, drop in from the 20% level back in 1980. Uh, we'll retrace that entire amount and be back there again by the end of the decade. So it'll be a hell of a ride if that's correct, uh, but you can see why um, the metals might might get some real sponsorship in that kind of environment. Uh, so thank you for having me, and, and um, uh, happy investing.